everyone. So in this slide, I'll be talking about hydraulic horsepower, brake horsepower, motor power, and all the efficiencies that you need to keep an eye on so that you could understand the performance of pumps. So let's start by saying in a perfect world, all the input power to a pump motor would eventually go to useful energy. So the pump motor transmits energy to the fluid, which we all know. So if you imagine the schematic where you have a guy that's using a piston and is pushing fluid inside of a pipe. And if you imagine that the guy is the pump motor and you have the liquid that's traveling is being pushed by this piston. And so you could think that the useful work generated by the pump motor would be force times distance, where we know force over here can be represented as pressure times area. If you look at the introduction video, I talked about what pressure is. Pressure is force over area. And so if you know the area of the piston and you know the pressure, you could substitute that instead of force. And so the work would be pressure times area times the length that is traveled. And we know that the area times the length is essentially um, a unit of volume. So work can be calculated with multiplying pressure that is generated by the motor multiplied by the volume. So you could say that the useful power generated by the motor would be uh, work over time because that that is what power is that's the definition of power and work is pressure times the volume and time is just um, time so we bring it over here and volume over time is eventually the volumetric flow rate so power is essentially um, power that is being transmitted to the fluid is essentially pressure times the volumetric flow rate so the first parameter that you, I want you to be aware of is the hydraulic horsepower. And essentially hydraulic horsepower is the power consumption by the pump that is used to move the fluid. And so it is the useful energy. It's the energy that is being transmitted to the fluid itself. And you could see that based on what we just talked about, the hydraulic horsepower is pressure times the volumetric flow rate. Now, what is this number that I'm dividing it by? It's just a conversion unit because the pressure here is expressed in PSI and the volumetric flow rate here is expressed in gallons per minute. And if you want to convert that power to a horsepower unit, you'd have to divide that by 1714 to calculate the hydraulic horsepower. Now, this term is, is important and I want you to be aware of it. So the second parameter that I want to talk about, which is important for you to know, is the brake horsepower. And the brake horsepower is the total power consumption by the pump. And so it would include the hydraulic horsepower, which is the useful energy that is generated by the pump that is absorbed by the fluid. And also you have to consider the pump losses, which is what we just talked about uh, in the previous slide, which are a contribution of mechanical losses, volumetric losses, and hydraulic losses. And essentially, the brake horsepower can be calculated in two ways. You could add the hydraulic horsepower, and you can add that to the losses of the pump. Or if, you, if the pump supplier provides you with a pump efficiency, which is most likely the case, you could calculate what the brake horsepower is using this equation. The next parameter that I want you to be aware of is the pump efficiency, which is what I used in the brake, brake horsepower equation, this equation. However, it's important for you to know it's the ratio of useful power over total power that is consumed by the pump. And so essentially, it's the horse, it's the hydraulic horsepower divided by the brake horsepower of the pump. The other power that I want you to be aware of is the motor power, which is the total power generated by the motor. And that includes the brake horsepower, which is all the power that's supplied to the pump, plus some losses that the motor inherently has within itself. 
And so there's another equation that you could express the motor power with is if you know the efficiency of the motor. And the final term that I want you to be aware of is the motor efficiency, which is essentially the ratio of the total power transmitted to the pump over the total power generated by the motor. And so these five terms you'll find are used in industry, and I want you to be aware of them. You might not necessarily need to use them at your work, but it's good to be aware of them. I, I really like this diagram because I think this diagram is a summary of of all the uh, horsepowers that and the terms that I've been using. So essentially, you have the pump. The pump generates power from electrical power that comes in. The power that is generated from the electrical power is basically the motor power. And the motor power then transmits energy to the pump. And the power that the pump receives from the motor is called the brake horsepower. And it's going to be less than the motor power because there are some uh, motor inefficiencies. The total energy that's received by the pump, a portion of that is lost in some losses of the pump. The three losses that we mentioned, the hydraulic losses, the mechanical losses, and the volumetric losses. And then the remaining of the pump energy goes to useful work, which goes to the hydraulic horsepower of the pump. And that drop is due to the pump losses. And as you can see, the fluid comes in here and then it gains the energy. It gains basically the hydraulic horsepower as it exits through the pump. So I really like the schematic because it summarizes all the terms that I've just described here. However, let's go to an example to see how we can apply this to a real case scenario.